Hello there, thanks for watching our Galatians Bible study today. We're in Galatians chapter 4 and we're going to do the third section of the chapter which is verses 21 down to verse 31 and I've put over that this heading an appeal for freedom. Let me read it to you. Tell me, you that desire to be under the law, do you not hear the law? For it is written that Abraham had two sons, the one by a bondwoman, the other by a free woman. But he who was of the bondwoman was born after the flesh, but he of the free woman was by promise, which things are an allegory, for these are the two covenants, the one from Mount Sinai which gendereth to bondage, which is Agar, for this Agar is Mount Sinai in Arabia, and answereth to Jerusalem which now is, and is in bondage with her children. But Jerusalem, which is above is free, which is the mother of us all, for it is written, Rejoice thou barren that bearest not, Break forth and cry, thou that travailest not, for the desolate hath many more children than she which hath an husband. Now we, brethren, as Isaac was, are the children of promise. And as then, he that was born after the flesh persecuted him that was born after the spirit, even so it is now. Nevertheless, what saith the scripture? Cast out the bondwoman and her son, for the son of the bondwoman shall not be heir with the son of the free woman. So then... Brethren, we are not children of the bondwoman, but of the free. Now we trust the Lord will bless his, his word to us today. Now what the Apostle Paul is doing in this section is he's drawing some parallels. And I think it probably would have been quite shocking to those people who had read this for the very first time because they had always assumed that the illustration that would be given of blessing for Israel was always going to be linked to Abraham's son Isaac. But actually in this passage, the Apostle is identifying the blessing of the Son of Promise is going to be that which is for those who come to God by faith. That is every believer who comes to Christ through faith. So let's think about the passage. Uh, basically I'm just going to give you the bare bones of the passage because um, I, I think probably to go into any more detail might be beyond me and there are many other people you can listen to who can give you a, a very detailed explanation. But let's pick up some very simple things in the passage. First thing we notice is that there are two sons that are mentioned in verse number 22. It is written that Abram had two sons, one by a slave woman, one by a free woman. Then, so, so there's two sons, there's two mothers, two different mothers. One's a slave girl, the other's a free woman. He's also going to mention two mountains. If you come down to verse number 24, um, one is from Mount Sinai, and then the other one is to do with Jerusalem. So he talks about one is from Mount Sinai, bearing children for slavery. She is Hagar. Now Hagar is Mount Sinai. She corresponds to the present Jerusalem, for she is in slavery with her children. But the Jerusalem, which is above, is free. And she is our mother. Are you going to notice these parallels? That it, it, the present Jerusalem is going to be identified with the Jews and with the bondage of the law. But the Jerusalem, which is above, she is our mother. She's linked to those of faith. So we've noticed here that there are two sons, which we know as Ishmael and Isaac. We know there are two mothers. There's a slave woman and a free woman. We know in verse 23 that the son of the slave was born according to the flesh. The son of the free woman was born through promise. So that's obvious. Go back into the history of it. Abraham wrongly slept with Hagar, producing a child as a result of fleshly impulses and desires, trying to override the plans of God to produce an heir. Whereas Isaac is the son of the free woman through promise. Now he says in verse 24, you've got to understand this as figurative, allegorical. These women are two covenants. And he's thinking about the promise of God that is to Israel and the promises of God to Abraham and to those of faith. And so he thinks about Mount Sinai is linked to the law, uh, bearing children for slavery, Hagar. And we're told in this allegory that Hagar is Mount Sinai. So Hagar is linked to the mount where the law was given, which corresponds to the present Jerusalem. She's in slavery with her children, so he's making this point, which will be very offensive to the people listening, that the Jew was in slavery because the law held him in bondage. But the contrast is the child of the free. 
and that's Isaac. The Jew would have said, no, that's us. But the, the, the scripture is saying, no, no, Isaac is a picture in this passage. The allegory is of Isaac, born of a free woman, the child of promise to the Christian, the person who's saved and in, in the church. So the Jerusalem above is free and she is our mother. So Jerusalem, the heavenly Jerusalem, which you read about in Hebrews chapter 12 and you'll get to it again in Revelation 21 uh, and so on. Uh, and so he takes us to an Old Testament reference here, taking us to Isaiah 54. Rejoice, O barren one who does not bear. Break forth and cry aloud, you are not in labour. For the children of the desolate one will be more than those of the one who has a husband. So he's taking us back to show that God reverses and brings blessing. And brings blessing to the one who could not have children, as in Sarah. And is going to bring blessing uh, to those who by faith trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. Now he says in verse 28, now you brothers are like Isaac. You're the children of promise. And just as at that time he who was born according to the flesh pers persecuted him was born according to the spirit, so it is now. So he's saying there is persecution. These believers in Galatia, they, they face persecution from who? From the Jews. From the people who were born under the law. People who were born in the bondage of the law. So he's saying here, just as it was in the past, that he that was born according to the flesh persecuted him who was born according to the spirit. So Ishmael caused great grief to Isaac. There was a mockery, there was a despising. The scripture says that's exactly a picture of what happens to those who are born according to the promise and faith or pictured in Isaac, the child of promise. But what does the scripture say? Cast out the slave woman and her son. For the son of the slave woman shall not inherit with the son of the free woman. This is shocking again. You remember in the story of the account of Abraham and Hagar and Ishmael. That Hagar was cast out. And so was the son. And it was a terrible thing. And God did provide for Ishmael. And promised Abraham would do that. But he had to put him out. He couldn't share in the promise. And so the picture here is that those who don't come to Christ by faith. They're cast out. They cannot inherit with the blessings of salvation through faith because of the promises of God to Abraham. So they, they are cast aside. And you'll get the details of that Romans chapters 9, 10 and 11 and how in the purposes of God, God will bring Israel back into blessing. But at this point in time, they're cast out, they're cast aside. They can't inherit, they can't come into the blessings of the promises of faith. So he ends the section by saying in verse 31, So brothers, we are not children of the slave but of the free woman. And in chapter 5, he's going to bring us to remind us of the liberty, the freedom through which Christ has set us free. Now, I hope I haven't complicated things by how I've explained that. There are a couple of parallels there and, and maybe slight uh, difficulty, I would say, in maybe understanding verse 27. But I hope we've got the general theme of the illustration that he's using about Hagar actually picturing the bondage of Israel and Isaac and Sarah illustrating the child of promise, which is the believers of this dispensation in, under the banner of the church brought into the grace of God through faith in Christ, the fulfilment of the promise of Abraham. May God bless his word to you today.